Hi, this is an example problem from chapter 7 that uses the principle of conservation of linear momentum. Pause for a moment and read the question. So we see we have an archer here and uh, he's dressed up standing on the ice holding a bow with an arrow and is ready to fire the arrow but hasn't done so yet. Uh, whenever we do conservation momentum problems we want to identify the system. There's going to be more than one objects in our system and we need to identify what they are. In this case uh, it helps us understand what's going to happen with the uh, firing of the arrow, right? Once the arrow is shot, the arrow will leave while the person, his clothes, his bow, his quiver with arrows, they all, they all remain with him, right? So the system here is going to be uh, two objects. We're going to have one, it's going to be the arrow, and two is the man with clothes, bow, etc. Right? And in particular, uh, we're going to use conservation of linear momentum, which says that uh, before the interaction, the interaction in this case is firing the arrow, the total momentum before that, or initial, when we add it up for each thing in the system, at the end, if we add up the momentum, for each object in the system, it's going to be the same. We've got two objects, so we've got a P for the uh, the man, let me say. Well, I guess we'll start with the arrow. The arrow, I'm going to call this P arrow initial. Notice we have some subscripts here. Plus P man initial say equals the sum of the same two linear momenta after the arrow is fired, final. And of course, one more step, right? We know the equation for momentum is m times v, right? So for the uh, arrow, we get the mass of the arrow, is that a little better, times the uh, velocity of the arrow initial, plus for the man, we've got the mass of the man, times the velocity of the man initial. And on the other side, we're using the same equation for momentum, linear momentum, mass of the arrow, final, sorry, mass doesn't change, velocity of the arrow, final, plus mass of the man times the velocity of the man, final. So as you can see again, as usual with these type of problems, we've got an initial side, right? That's before the interaction. Then we've got the final side. That's after the interaction. So let's go ahead and draw. I always like to draw before and after here. So here's your before. And we can see that we've got uh, velocities, right? We know what the masses are here. Let's go ahead and write them down. So for the arrow, mass of the arrow, it is 0 0.03 kilograms, right? And for the man, that's equal to 60 kilograms, right? So we know the masses. From the pictures, let's identify the velocities, right? So we've got the uh, velocity of the man here in the beginning, and the velocity of the arrow in the beginning. And uh, in fact, the archer is holding the uh, arrow and he's at rest on the ice, and therefore himself and the arrow are both at rest. So we know what the initial values are here. Let's look at the final. Go ahead and draw that picture for final. What does it look like now? Well, here's the ice surface. And uh, we know that the arrow is going to be flying through the air here. Right, there's your arrow and it's going to have some final velocity. And the man, well, what do you think is going to be happening with the man? Remember the man is standing here on some ice that is frictionless. Well, they're going to have some recoil velocity, right? So this man here is going to be moving back in this direction. Probably not very fast compared to the arrow. And so we've got V man 
final, right? Do we know what the arrow's velocity is? We do know what it is. Final velocity, 50 meters per second. So notice that if we look at our equation for conservation linear momentum, we know all the masses, good. And we know all the velocities, right? Except for one. We don't know this. So that's typically how these problems work. Let's put our zeros in. Both the initial velocities are zero. So that whole term is gone and that whole term is gone. And what are we left with? Well, we're left with zero on this side is equal to the mass of the man, the mass of the arrow times the velocity of the arrow final plus the mass of the man times the velocity of the man final. And of course we're trying to figure out what is the velocity of the man. We need to do a little bit of algebra and then we're going to plug in our numbers to solve for it. So a little bit of algebra here. Mass of the man times the velocity of the man final. I'm going to subtract the other term the other side. So the mass of the arrow times the velocity of the arrow final. And uh, finally we're going to divide by the mass of the man on both sides. And when we do that we'll come up with an equation for the velocity of the man after he shoots the arrow. Be minus m a v a f divided by mass of the man. And let's go ahead and plug in our numbers here. We've got a negative mass of the arrow 0.03 kilograms times the velocity of the arrow final 50 meters per second that's a positive right and so what is the velocity of the man final plugging that into the calculator I get this answer here a negative 0 0.025 meters per second remember velocity is a vector this means that the man is moving with a recoil velocity very small towards the uh, left hand side, right? And so we can kind of see how this momentum conservation works out, right? We had in this case a uh, very small mass of the arrow and a uh, very large velocity, right? Whereas for the man, relatively larger mass and small velocity. When we add those two together, those two numbers are equal and opposite to produce zero. Their sum is the same as the total initial linear momentum which was zero right and notice how the uh, signs on these are super important because we needed these two to cancel out to give us the same condition after as we had before